Okay, boys and girls, this is our final book that um, I chose by Tommy DePaula. And this is a sequel to the book Bill and Pete, which we just read, which was over there. Um, but Bill and Pete, um, a sequel means it's, it's a book that comes after. Okay, so you read Bill and Pete first. Now this one's called Bill and Pete Go Down the Nile. And do you remember that the Nile is in Egypt? It's a big river, okay? And again, we're going to think about some of the things. You're going to actually see a couple of the same characters from the other book. That's what's nice about sequels. You're, it's easier to understand because you're familiar with a lot of the characters. Okay, so something else happens, a, a little bit of a problem, and they help to solve it. Okay, so let's read to see what the problem is in this story. Oops, I think I skipped the page. Here we go. Tomorrow was the first day of school, and William Everett Crocodile, who was called Bill, and his friend Pete, who was his toothbrush, were getting ready. Don't forget your new pencil box, Bill, said Mama, and your new lunch box, said Pete. It will be so nice to see Miss Ibis again, Mama, said Bill. I wonder what you'll learn this year, said Mama. And it says tomorrow, the first day of school. So now they're going back to school. The next morning, after kissing Mama goodbye, Bill and Pete started out for school. It was fun to see all the other little crocodiles again see them all and they have birds right and there's Pete Bill and Pete now class said Miss Ibis we are going to start this year by studying history and geography of Egypt and the River Nile oh goody cried all the children so history is about things that happened long ago and then geography of Egypt is kind of like the land they're going to they're going to study the mountains and the rivers and the oceans that surround um, and that are part of Egypt. That might be helpful because this is where they live, so they're going to learn more about that. What did you learn today, Bill? asked Mama. We learned all about the River Nile, Mama, said Bill. It's nice to learn about your own hometown, said Mama. And that is the Nile by Bill. And so they, he painted a picture of the Nile and he painted a picture of his house and there are those hearts again his mother just loves him on Tuesday Miss Ibis told the class about the Sphinx Sphinx is a huge monument that's right near huge pyramids they are enormous that the Egyptians built so many years ago today we learned about the stinks mama said Bill you mean Thanks, Bill, said Pete. And boy, is it weird looking. Yeah, it kind of looks like a lion and a person, but it supposedly protects the pyramids. Okay. On Wednesday, Ms. Ibis told the class all about pharaohs, the pyramids and mummies. So the pharaohs were the kings of Egypt and queens there were queens too um, and they ruled the kingdom and when people died they would wrap them up like a mummy and they would put them in these special um, places called a sarcophagus okay they're containers but they were beautifully painted and the pharaohs built the pyramids so they could be buried there with all of their riches said miss ibis when they died, they were wrapped in long strips of cloth and called mummies. The mummies was put in a beautiful case called a sarcophagus. So the, um, the pyramids were where all of the pharaohs were buried and they would put the pharaohs in there, wrap them like a mummy, put them in the sarcophagus, and then they would put lots of jewels and even furniture in there. They, the pyramids were very big. What did you learn today, Bill, said Mama. Oh, Mama, we learned about the pharaohs and the pyramids, said Bill. We learned about mummies and esophaguses. And she said, you mean sarcophaguses, said Pete. Oh, how exciting, said Mama. Esophagus is part of your throat. <laughs> but he's getting some of these words confused. That's kind of funny. I think 
you can tell that Tommy DePaulo puts a little humor in his stories. On Thursday, Mazibus told the class about the sacred eye of I Isis. It is the most valuable jewel in all the world, said Mazibus. So it's a very valuable jewel, okay, like a diamond or an emerald. Oh, said all the little crocodiles. But she added, there is a saying that whoever owns it has bad luck. Oh, said all the little crocodiles. And see, you can say that, you can tell that they're saying that. That is why it is kept in the Royal Museum, said Ms. Ibis. Now, how would you like to see the Sphinx, the pyramids, and the sacred eye of Isis? Oh, yes, said the little crocodiles. Well, tomorrow we are going to take a class trip down the Nile. Hooray, they all shouted. So they're going to go on a little field trip. Do you have your lunchbox, asked Mama. Yes, Mama, said Bill. Now, Pete, don't forget to brush Bill's teeth, said Mama. I won't, said Pete. I have a good time and listen to Miss Ibis and do what she says, said Mama. Goodbye, Mama, said Bill and Pete. So off they go. They're going to go on their field trip. Does everyone have their partners, Miss Ibis asked. Yes, Miss Ibis. Then swim, then forward, swim. Now, which one do you think is Bill and Pete? See? Pete's a little bit darker pink, right? Do you remember that from the front of the book and all the other pictures? Ooh, said the little crocodiles. There's the Grand Hotel. Look at that. Ooh, said all the little crocodiles. There's the Sphinx. There it is. And they're using, he's using those speech bubbles again, and he's framing his pictures again. Bill, said Pete, look at that man in the big car with all the ladies. He must be a pharaoh, said Bill. Watch out for the bad guy, whispered an old crocodile to Bill and Pete as they swam by. Do you recognize that, that man right there from the other book? Hmm, it might be the bad guy. Stay in line, said Ms. Ibis as the Nile Queen went by. The Nile Queen is the big boat. Ooh, said the little crocodiles. So they're enjoying this. Oh, now they're going to go to the pyramids. Here we are at the pyramids, said Ms. Ibis, as the class stepped ashore. That means they stepped off of, out of the water and into the land. Shore means the land. Ms. Ibis brought, bought the tickets and they all went inside. The guide will hold a big mirror to help light up the passageway so we can see. Ms. Ibis explained to the class, now as I told you all, the mummies and all the riches are no longer kept here. They are in the Royal Museum, which we will visit next. And where we will see the sacred eye of Isis. Ooh, said all the little crocodiles. Now look at how Tommy DePaulo made him look so far away. Do you notice that? He put him really small and then he put these lines coming this way. And then he made other things look kind of close, closer, right? Like there, the Sphinx is far away. Um, you'll see in a minute, you're going to see it's closer too. The class saw mummies and sarcophaguses and the sacred eye of Isis. There's that man again, Bill whispered Pete. He sure looks familiar. That's the man that they saw when they were in the river. Look carefully. Do you remember that character? Then they saw, then they sat down to eat lunch. Miss Ibis, may I be excused, please, said Bill. And he and Pete went inside to find a restroom to brush Bill's teeth. So they're going to go inside. Now look carefully. Think about this. There's the sacred eye of Isis. There's the big jewel. It's like a big diamond. Aha, look, Bill, said Pete. <gasps> All of these people were really bad guys. They were dressed up like they were the, the, um, the women of the church, the nuns. And then, who is this in that disguise? I thought I recognized him. It's the bad guy, the bad guy from the Bill and Pete book. See, he had the sunglasses and the mustache. 
what do you think he's going to try to do? Do you think he's going to try to steal the jewel? Oh, Mr. Bad Guy, don't, cried Bill. You'll have bad luck. He's going to try to steal it. And then you know what he says to him? He says, shut up, you walking suitcase, yelled the bad guy. And he locked Bill inside a sarcophagus. He locked him in there. Why does he call him a walking suitcase? Remember how Bill was so afraid of becoming a suitcase? They kill the crocodiles and they take their skin and they make suitcases. He's calling him a walking suitcase. You can't do that to my friend, shouted Pete, and he flew into the restroom to get some toilet paper. <gasps> Take that, said Pete, and he flew around and around, and presto, the bad guy was a mummy. Look at that. <laughs> so again, Pete saved the day. And then Pete untied a guard who let Bill out of the sarcophagus. Where have you been, William Everett, scolded Ms. Ibis. Why, these two fine fellows saved the sacred eye of Isis from falling into evil hands, said the head of the museum. The bad guy is being taken to Cairo and put in jail. As a reward, we're going to send you home on the Nile Queen. So they let them take the Nile Queen, which is a huge, beautiful boat, home. And they all said, oh, said all the little crocodiles, ooh. And so Mama... That's what happened on our first class trip, said Bill. My goodness, said Mama, what an adventure. And Ms. Ibis was right, said Bill. The sacred heart eye of Isis does bring bad luck, especially to bad guys. So see, he tried to steal it and wasn't very lucky. Now he's in jail because he made a bad choice. Okay, so this is a sequel. This came after the first book. All right, you recognized a lot of um, the... Um, characters from the first one and you know you can see how he has a nice way of see how here this the characters a little bit closer and then when you saw him here he was far away so he made him smaller that's that whole perspective if you want things to be close you put them bigger if you want them to be far away you can make them smaller Okay, so let's look here. This is one thing that you could do when you're at home today. You could maybe draw almost like a timeline of the things that they saw. They saw the Grand Hotel, they saw the pyramids, they saw the Sphinx. You could keep going. And I, I uh, labeled this the Nile River, and I put labels here for each thing that Bill and Pete saw. Okay. So that could be something that you do after you've, now that you've read this story, you could make your own little timeline.